Hi everybody, I'm Erica from Diary of a Domestic Diva and today we are going to make authentic churros españoles. So if you've never heard of a churro before, it is um, a typical Spanish fried dough that's served with a thick uh, hot chocolate, for lack of a better term, for dipping. Uh, they've been along for, uh, around for as long as I can remember and they are typically served as a breakfast um, or uh, as a merienda, which is like a late afternoon snack. So the basic ingredients that we are going to need to make churros today are all-purpose flour, salt or coarse salt. You may or may not want to use some olive oil, that's optional, and water. And then of course you will need cooking oil or vegetable oil and as well some sugar and maybe cinnamon um, for dressing up the churros after. So let's get started. So to begin, what you need is equal parts water and flour. So I'm actually doubling up my recipe in anticipation of my kids devouring these tonight. So I'm going to heat up my pot and I'm going to add two cups of water. And then I'm going to put that on a high heat and wait for it to come to a boil. And then I'm going to add the coarse salt, just uh, like a big pinch of salt. In this case, maybe a couple of pinches since I'm doubling the recipe and wait for it to dissolve. And then afterwards, I'm going to add the flour. But first of all, I'm going to sift two cups of flour. I've already got one cup already in here. You do not need a fancy sifter. You can just use uh, a strainer for that and just give it a little tap. So in fact, um, if you go online and start researching churros, it is a little bit overwhelming the uh, amount of recipes that you will find and the amount of variations, which is why I went directly to the source, my dad. The first time I made churros was actually two years ago. And uh, apparently one of the faux pas of a traditional churro from Spain is to use eggs. And I had used eggs. Mind you, they turned out very, very well. But I called my dad last night and asked him for the recipe without eggs. So it's very surprising sometimes how simple ingredients can come together to make a really, really uh, flavorful food or dish. And in fact, a lot of Spanish recipes that I grew up with are made from very simple ingredients and are packed with flavor. In this case, because we're frying the dough and we're dipping it in chocolate, that's the, uh, that's the kick. So we're just going to wait for the water to boil and, uh, and then we'll get going with the rest of the recipe. Okay, so we're back. The water is now boiling. So I'm going to put a couple of pinches of salt and I'm sort of winging it because like I said, I have not made this recipe in two years and I'm sort of just going by my dad's recipe which is put a little of this, put a little of that. So we're just going to dissolve the salt because that was coarse salt that I used. Now at this point, or actually while you're boiling the water, would be the time that you would actually put maybe a, a tablespoon or so of olive oil in. Um, I've opted not to. And I'm going to just see how that turns out and maybe another time I'll try it with the olive oil. But for today, I'm just going to use the water and the salt. Now some variations tell you to start to add the water to the flour and some say add the flour to the water. Um, in either case, the idea is to add it all at once. And as well, some variations say to uh, start it on the stove and then remove it from the heat and some say turn off the heat right away. So I'm actually going to put the flour right in here and I probably should have used a bigger pot, but I didn't. Mix and we mix. So again, in the variations, um, a lot of the recipes tell you to, once you've mixed the water and the flour really well, they tell you to just let it sit for as little as 30 seconds. Others tell you to cover it with a cloth and let it sit longer. Um, it's my understanding the longer you let it sit, maybe the tougher the dough might get or the harder. So we don't really want that to happen. 
Mine's a little stiff now, and honestly, I'm just a little worried it might be a little too stiff for piping. Hard to know when it's your first time doing a recipe and then making a video about it. Well, actually, this might be okay. All right, forget it. My, man, my fancy washcloth is a paper towel. All right, so I already actually started the oil heating over here, but we need a bigger burner, so we'll just get that going. So as the oil, while the oil heats, uh, I'm going to work on piping the churros. This is what we have for the dough. It's a nice sticky ball. So it is all sticking together. I mean, there's some little scraps that are stuck to the pan or to the pot. So I guess that's normal. We'll find out. So what I've done, I don't have a fancy churrero, which is an actual contraption that is used to make churros. Uh, instead, I went with the uber simple uh, pastry bag and a tip. So frosting tip. And since I bake a lot, I have a lot of frosting tips. I'm going to take a gander at the larger tip. It's the 1M tip there is also the tip number 22 um, which I've heard works as well but we're gonna try this one and see how it how it works out plus if my if my dough is a little bit thicker then it might come out a little bit easier so the easiest way to fill it is to put it uh, put the bag over a sturdy glass and then just let it sort of um, spread it over the lip of the glass and then that way you can work with one hand to fill the bag and push it push the dough all the way down so that you don't have any air bubbles and this time as well because I like to switch things up I'm actually gonna pipe the churro dough onto a piece of parchment and then from there I will drop it into the hot oil that way I can get all the pieces ready and and drop them in one at a time we're going to let's see this works maybe a little bit better Oh la la, I don't know. And it's also hot. It is still hot, so. Push that down. And again, because I doubled the recipe, I'll have to do this probably a, a few times. Fill it. I'm actually very interested to see how this is going to turn out. You know what? I think I'm going to just leave that one for a minute. That way I can the bag. You guys, I'm wondering if this is going to be too thick. Elbow grease. Elbow grease. <laughs> Come on. That's all I need is for the bag to explode on me. So this is a bit Thick, so I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to pipe out, but let's just see what we can do here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. This is going to take forever, you guys. Holy cow. Yeah, that's still not working. And I have a feeling it's going to just be a pain in the butt. Okay, let's do this again. All right, so this is round two of the churro making. Water. And again, a couple of pinches of salt. And we're going to add some olive oil this time about a tablespoon or so. We're going to say a little prayer. In the meantime, we're going to measure out our flour. So two cups of sifted flour. And this time, once the water has boiled, we're not going to put in all the flour at once. 
it'll take out a little bit. Okay, the water has started to boil and we wanna make sure that all the salt has dissolved. We are trying with olive oil this time. Maybe it'll also make it a little less sticky. Okay, we're gonna add, uh, we're gonna take out some flour. You guys, I almost did it again. We'll take out four tablespoons, give or take, and we'll have that ready to add back in if we need it. And that's great, so I spilled half of it. No biggie, we'll probably need it, and again. I wish I could say it smells really good in here right now, but there's like burnt stuff on the stove, the smell of hot oil, and I don't wanna turn the fan on because then you won't be able to hear me. As it is, I have the window open, and so you can probably hear the trucks in the background, which is lovely. Some good ambiance, right? All right, so we're giving her with the elbow grease. And honestly, I don't think I'm gonna need more flour. <laughs> and also, this better work. I'm still concerned that it's not gonna be uh, gonna have to pipe through that bag. I don't think there's a risk of overworking the dough. However, I don't know. I just want to make sure there aren't any flour lumps left and then we'll debate the uh, merits of the piping. This is probably where the churrero comes in handy because it's a little more heavy duty than the bag, which I'm not sure is going to be my friend right now. Okay, this actually seems to be coming out a lot easier. Can you see? I'm going to pipe rings. Let's see how this works. Oh, it's hot. Really hot, actually. Yay, it worked! <laughs> okay, we have one. Alright, so you'll see, I was concerned it was still pretty thick. And again, I'm pushing it right down in there. Like, look at this. It's sticking to the spoon. See that? But it's sticky enough, but it doesn't stick to my fingers. So it does form a ball-like texture. It's definitely not sticking to the side of the bag like it was before. And actually, this bag is starting to be a little bit compromised here. Okay, guys, I seriously just slapped electrical tape around my bag. Now, again, it is hot and I may risk getting another hole. Boom, there it is. Ah! So maybe I have my bag too full. More tape? Sure, why not? Why not? Two churros. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, man, we just lost the bag. Okay, so we've heated up our oil. It might be a touch 
on the high side. I've just turned it down a little bit, but once we have the churros, it's going to cool it down. So we should be okay. So I'm going to go get my churros over here. Hope you be careful, Mom. And one at a time you add them and you drop them in, in and then away. Away from them. To avoid any splatter. how they just bop to the top like that. Thanks guys for tuning in to Diary of a Domestic Diva, Adventures in Churro Making. Uh, we've certainly had our ups and downs this afternoon but we managed to make a beautiful plate of churros, which is sure to be a big hit for dessert tonight. And I will be sure to put the recipe uh, at the end for the chocolate, which is a must have accompaniment with churros for dipping. So be sure to make it. If you're gonna make churros, you might as well make the chocolate to go with it. All right, so be sure to link back to the blog or some of the other YouTube videos. And I'd love your comments. If you've tried the recipe um, and had better luck, I'd love to hear it. Look at that chocolate. See that? Look how thick that is. It's so good. Oh my gosh. Ready? Oh. <laughs> Do you hear that crunch? Hmm. So good. It's all in the chocolate. You've got to try it. <laughs> Cheers.